Um, so this is the um, meeting of the Public Shade Tree Commission. Um, and we usually start with public comments, so if you do have something you'd like to say to everybody, now would be a good time. Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, all Thank right. Thank you. Um, and then Terry, uh, do you have copies of the minutes? Did everyone get a copy? Mm -hmm. I actually haven't looked at them yet. I don't think I got a hard copy here. Oh, oh, sorry. That's it. Oh, sure, why not? All right, so let's just take a minute to read, since we just got these, let's take a minute to read them before we make a motion to approve. Any, any suggested changes to the minutes? They look good to me. Motion to approve the minutes. So one of the things I took away from that meeting is not only need, do we need to be 
at the table at the earliest stages of planning, but we actually need to be at the table at the earliest stages of RFP writing. Yeah. Because if their scope of work is always so narrow that it's never going to include trees, then that's not helpful at all. So, um, and I don't know how we, I, I suppose that could be something that we, as a commission, sort of modify our recommendation to, um, you know, when we met with the mayor and Lee Clyden. Um, but uh, we, we could say, hey, just after meeting with Alta, we realized that maybe there's even an earlier stage we should be uh, um, having a conversation with you about. Do they have any other um, things? Cooking? Cooking that we can anticipate that? Main Street. Uh, under actual real design, actually going to engineering design, no. So then the only engineering project we have to do any work would be like Pleasant Street. Um, you know, what Phil's group is actually doing is basically a just gathering data and just a conceptual, taking what, there, there was other, uh, Nelson Nygaard was another uh, group of uh, um, an architectural engineering architectural firm that actually did a look at the bike lanes and the traffic movements, uh, South Street and New South Street running into Main Street, and that's, that's how we came up with the bike lanes that are presently on South Street. And I'm not sure what happened with all that data, but I think Phil referenced it and said that they were all, they were kind of looking at it all and trying to see if any of that data could be harvested for their um, conceptual design of what, basically taking the, taking the city and kind of driving them in a direction as to this is, the, this is what we would like conceptually our streets to look like so we can share the road basically. Um, and then from there, you would actually take that concept and actually put it to a design. Well, you know? I can ask though. Why don't Why don't I just to answer your question? Uh, I I'll, I'll, think I'll ask actually, Wayne. I think actually Wayne sent an email a while back. Did you feel yeah. that about all the possible? I'll oh, just clarify. Yeah. Did you feel that they were pretty receptive and sort of had a, a moment of oh yeah, bikes, trees, like we overlooked that, but going forward, does it seem like it's a likely partnership that? I think it's a likely partnership. I, I don't know that they felt like they over overlooked it or um, I think that we expressed that the city's bike ped committee has overlooked it. Yeah. Um, and and we certainly drove home the notion that trees may even be the most effective way of calming traffic and making a more bike friendly city than maybe it, you know, most other ways of how, how the city can spend its money. Mm -hmm. um, so so then we just kind of dug down into the dirt a little bit about what that could look like. Uh -huh. we, we looked at a, a, a bird's eye view of, of Main Street and talked about what a redesign Main Street. There is going to be a Main Street redesign um, conversation this summer, I think. And as that comes up, I will, um, I'll notify everybody. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on this um, because this is just part of my chair report. But um, if you have any follow-up questions, um, Marilyn, yeah. you're welcome to ask me. All right. All right. Um, and then the mayor did approve our new mission language. Um, he just did informally to me in the hallway uh, when I was going into the Alta meeting. So I feel very comfortable that we can start using that language. Um, he just needs to, he's going to bundle it together with a bunch of other administrative order language changes um, that, that get submitted to the state. But I think that is our mission. That's actually the mission I handed over to Alta when, um, when we were meeting with them. So I think it's. And, and if I if I do any um, uh, like I'm thinking about making some quarter sheets of like what is the public shade tree commission, uh, I would use that language. Is that now on our website? It's not. It could be. Um, it has to be. It really, he's bundling them all together, and the city council has to approve. Oh, that's true. So why don't we wait on so that? So there's just that technical matter of improving this language. Well, in that case, I'm not going to make it put it on the on a quarter sheet yet. I think I'll wait. Probably would not be. Yeah, okay. uh, all right, and then the last one is just a reminder that um, next Thursday, this the, oh no, tomorrow, wow. sorry. <laughs> um, tomorrow, the mayor is going to uh, make the Arbor Day proclamation at city council meeting. City council meeting is at 7.15. Um, I don't know if anyone wants to go there, but that's going to happen. I, I, I haven't decided whether I'm going to be able to fit it on my calendar. But if I did, I would probably just go during public comment period and say, yeah. I understand the mayor's going to do this. I think this is wonderful. Here's what's happening. 
and use three minutes to just give a summary because it goes out on cable TV. That's it for my chair report. Okay, so uh, tree warden's report. So I just wanted to talk briefly about the uh, tree inventory and how it relates to our budget. So I met with the mayor on uh, April 12th to talk about the public sh the, uh, uh, challenge grant that we received from DCR for the tree inventory. Uh, and uh, the mayor indicated to me that uh, he is uh, very willing to um, have, make a financial transfer from the city's free cash account to the tune of about $50,000 to put it in a special uh, account to pay for our portion of the um, inventory. And then uh, what we can do is you marry that with the other $30,000. Even though we don't have the $30,000, you actually can spend, you can s use the uh, contract that we get from DCR as an actual uh, expending line. So we can actually run a deficit spending. So in reality, we have $80,000. Nice. I said, yeah, I kind of upped it a little bit good. just in case. Um, and he said they will probably do a transfer like for $48,000. And if we have any cost overruns, if the RFP comes in higher, um, then we will end up using some monies from the DPW's uh, tree planting account, the OM account, which now that we're going to be using like from free cash, we have that pot of money that we had last year. Um, and I anticipate probably having about $25,000 left. So I don't think necessarily at this meeting that we need to talk about what we're going to do with that $25,000. But I wanted to let you know that it's there. So um, we could conceivably, just really briefly, we could conceivably encumber it with the contract, and then once the inventory is in, have some good data for. No, no. it's an OM account, so you cannot encumber the money. So you, you, you have can, to spend it before July yes, 1st. Yes, because it's an OM. It's not a capital. A capital. If it was a capital line item, you can encumber it, and it rotates from year to year. It just has to receive approval from the mayor and the council. But it's this this kind of. Uh, OM account, the money goes back to the general fund. Yeah. So yeah. you basically have to have a contract signed, sealed, delivered, and paid for before June 30th. Right, but for example, like if we did that with Amherst Nursery, we could keep all the trees over there and then determine what those trees are going to be and where they're going to go once we have the trees. We need to have a, we, yes, but we, we would have to do it like we did last year. Okay. So the monies would have to be expended by June 30th. Okay. What does OM stand for? Ordinary maintenance. So I think that's uh, kind of, Rob and I kind of touched on it a little bit yesterday. We had a meeting about the, um, the, the trees that we received, uh, this caribou trees, plus we also talked about the trees that we're going to be getting that we already have at, at Amherst that they overwintered for us. So we were kind of just putting our collective heads together briefly about it and just talking about trying to figure out if um, we should potentially do some kind of a contract that we have that we actually buy X amount of trees purchase them all by June 30th from Amherst Nursery. But we didn't, we haven't gotten that far yet, and I don't want to take up a lot of time yeah. talking about it, so yeah. we can work on that. Okay, instead. so should I put the, that on the agenda for next? I would next think so. time? Okay, and just just, just one brief question. Have you guys, um, did you talk about, or, or could you consider ma uh, maintenance, uh, like maintenance of, of, of specimen trees, cabling, pruning? Well, we, we, that's why I'm, uh, there's $38,000 in there, so. Uh, the rest of that money is going to go for elm trees and cable and supplies. Okay, and by elm trees, you mean like the um, the large the, the, the large city elm trees that we have our preservation program. Okay, for. all right. And of course, I need to have a little bit of a cushion for you know uh, expenses that are unforeseen. So I mean, I think I think we figured, uh, we figured out that uh, twenty five thousand is we got sixty two trees at uh, eight thousand dollars last year, so we could get over two hundred some odd trees easily for. $25,000. Okay. So that's a possibility, but we need to further that discussion when we have some uh, a little more hard data. Okay. Um, the bare root trees, like I indicated, they arrived yesterday. Yes, yesterday, Tuesday. Jay came over and was gracious enough to help us uh, actually bury them, which is a technique that I have not seen before. And <laughs> I said bury them. Jay's like, yep, bury them. Cover them right up. So, whole tree. Uh, oh. So they're they're buried in our yard. Is that also to suppress the leaf growth? Yeah, just to slow down the growth until we get to plant. Yeah. What are they buried under? Uh, wood chips. Wood chips. 
blue chips in the water three times a day. So, so those are there. So um, we will be connecting. I think we're. I think we're. I, th I don't know if we're going to do any plantings next week. I don't think so. There's going to be so much preparation to get ready for this for Arbor Day and alone. And we have a couple of big tree jobs that I need to get done at the beginning of the week. We're probably not going to plant until the following week. But I, I need to sit down with Rob because Rob wants to do some volunteer uh, plantings and he's more than welcome to do them with the bare side that we have yeah. and get locations that I have. I'm happy to too, I'd love to help. So, and um, the other thing is I just wanted to follow up uh, 623 Kennedy Road. Uh, I did receive from the residents, um, so the, in the minutes it stated that there was no objections to the uh, um, public shade tree hearing so the trees will be removed um, and the residents did agree to the terms of mitigation which are uh, basically all of their design work that they did to actually restore plantings that are in the public right away plus the setback plant and the 20 feet off the right away which we consider setback plantings so their design services their installation costs and um, the actual cost of the plant material exceeded the uh, forty nine hundred dollar mark so feeling comfortable with allowing that to happen. They live up there in the party. So they will probably be doing the work I think in the next couple of weeks. And door hangers are completed. They will be delivered tomorrow to the DPW. So we'll have them to distribute. Lily's going to take some for an event she's doing on, in conjunction with Massasoit Street. Yeah, for a state event. Yeah, and then I'm going to, uh, we're going to have them for next week for uh, Arbor Day so we can actually put them on display when we're giving out whips to give them to folks. They have a thousand of them, 271 bucks for a thousand of them. What are these? Uh, the, the door hangers for the water. So, so when we're planting trees, we can actually hang the door hangers. Uh, if we don't make contact with the residents, even if we do, we can hand them one. So they're two-sided. If you want to see the PDF, I can send it to you. But um, I, 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 Rich and I created the language and my friend Scott Gregory, who's a graphic designer, made them. Um, and they're two-sided, so one side is very general, like, here's a, this is, this is our vision for Northampton, to do a major relief project. Are you interested in volunteering? And it gives Rich's contact information, and then it summarizes the benefits of trees. So that's a really nice general overview. And then the other side, it says, this tree needs water, can it count on you? And then it says how much it costs on average to, to water a tree over the period of a whole season. If you're interested in watering this tree, because it's mostly going to be hung on the doors of people who are adjacent to new trees. And actually, that's something I think we should talk about is the trees that went in last fall. Yeah. They should get door hangers. Yeah. Anyway, then it's, it's got Rich's contact information again on that side. So it's a, good, it's a really good resource that we're going to have. And we're thinking about actually duplicating them for other um, specific educational things like uh, volcano mulching. <laughs> Um, you know, that's that's another one that we could we can have some joy. Whenever we see it, like we can just slide it to whoever and go like, you know, the, messaging. Sounds good. How do you anticipate um, using those on the Earth Day event on the 29th? People will be coming I think, by and I think that maybe when, getting when a win. We can we can hand them out to folks that if they're interested in taking them, you know. Uh, we can actually probably, um, I would actually like to probably give one to each of the classes that we, for yeah. example, so these the teachers, because we're, we want them not to, we're going to put a, when we're done, we're going to put a water bag on the tree. We want them to actually, to see if there's somehow they can actually keep, you know, keep yeah. the water bag filled a couple times a week. So those kind of things, and then we'll have them on the table out here, so if people would like to take a couple of them. We're going to have a thousand of them. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't, I don't think we're going to run out, so people can take really, as they like, you can always get more. Yeah. I think Lily and I were originally not going to get a thousand, but uh, it was the economy of scale. Yes, yeah. and so we decided that uh, you know if we want to make changes, we can make changes. But these are these are nice, so informational, very informational. Yeah, could you send a PDF, Lily? Sure. Yeah. Good to see you having fun. Um, along the same lines, there was an idea of having a flyer go out in the water bill, but. Yeah, and we're going to circle back. To, keep reminding me on that. I really feel like there's a great opportunity there, and I just feel like we've been looking a little bit just right in front of our headlights, but I would like to do that. I, I think that um, 
might be a good idea to do it. But uh, also having a door hanger um, that makes people aware of the setback planting program um, might be more, in some ways, more of a point uh, in that then it would be somewhat selective where, where they got handed out. It right. might then allow us to target certain neighborhoods that don't have trees. Yeah. Um, in terms of timing, uh, if we're going to do a fall planting, I, I think it's important to have a lot of, it be, in my view, it's good to have a lot of the setback plantings. And so a door hanger would maybe be able to dig up the correct uh, or best places to plant setback. That's a great idea. Okay. So so then now there's, there's three possible things. Um, the watering, the setback planting, and the volcano mulching. Let me just forward this before I forget. To the end. Well, yeah. Are you going to send this out to us? I am. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to send it. I'm going to send it to all of you. It's it's just going to um. It's just going to have an attachment. Rich, you have those Arbor Day ash tags. You have some you're going to be putting out. I thought we originally said because we were so busy with so many other things on Arbor Day that we were actually going to make it a separate day to do that. DCR, they weren't very, um, they, they were not very uh, gracious, and I shouldn't say gracious, but they didn't give us a lot of ash tags. They gave us one box. Apparently, we got like 10 times more than other they, Anybody yeah. else? Yeah. Oh, okay. So there you go. So, so yes. one box of? One oh, box maybe of 25. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, okay. think they, I don't think they gave out a lot. They want you to kind of focus on highly visible trees. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the idea isn't to do it every tree, but just to get the focus. I think that makes sense. Okie dokie. Uh, anything else, Rich? No. Okay. All right. Um, before I hand it over to you, Marilyn, yeah. on, uh, on Arbor Day, I'll just say that um, the press release is out. You all should have seen it. Yeah. Um, so that that piece is done. And also that when you, um, when you leave this discussion, Marilyn, um, well, Rich and I will chime in because we met this morning to just talk about some details and we do have some questions, clarifications that we okay, good. hold on. Okay, for the events happening on the 29th, uh, let's start with the tree plantings. Um, I have not yet heard back from the leads, principal, and or teachers, so um, there's a lot of question marks around that school um, so we can get back to that but in the meantime I have heard back from all of the teachers at the other three schools so at Ryan we have two third grade classes 45 students all together and um, Lily and Jay are the two commissioners who volunteer to work there um, and we have one volunteer Julie Kling I do. Okay. And um, the time there is 9.30. That was the time that they said we were best. Okay. Um, for Jackson Street, uh, 
2 p.m. is the time that the teachers there said would work best. Uh, there's a fourth grade class and a first grade class, 42 students all together. Fourth and what? Oh, uh, fourth and first. Fourth yep. and first. And uh, Lily and Marilyn are the two commissioners who volunteered there. Um, and we decided we were going to do the plantings at the same time, separate people, right? That's what we decided. Like that Lily would be one group, Marilyn would do another. Yeah. Okay. But we could do it otherwise if you want. No, I think that's fine. Okay. Is that in all the schools? Yeah. So except for except for it looks like there's only one commissioner who can do Bridge Street at noon, Jen. Yeah. So unless one of us can bop over there and help Jen, she'll have to do the classes back to back. And it's a kinder kindergartner and first grade class, so those ages at least are closer together. Um, there's 18 kindergartners, 15 first graders. So I might I might actually be able to bop over and help. I've kind of carved out that whole day. Okay. Um. By the way, did you migrate all this to our Google spreadsheet? Uh, no, not yet. But I'm only going to do that. Yeah, if you could do that as soon as possible, that, that way we can all just be working from the same central spots. Okay. Uh, and we have one volunteer, uh, Angie Gregory. Do you, do you have DPW staff I can fill in there? Yep. Rich? All right, so. And we still need, it looks like, Corey's on some of these people? Yes, I, I'm going to be following up with folks this week. We've received two, two so far from Julie, mm -hmm. and who's the other one? Deb, Dwayne, or Angie? Deb Jacobs, it looks like on the spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay, I believe it was her. Deb, all right. All right, so I'll follow up with Dwayne and Angie. Uh, for the WIP distribution, um, we have volunteers for, we have volunteer coverage from all the commissioners from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. on Friday and 8 a.m. until noon on Saturday. But did you change the times for that, Lily? We changed it slightly. Um, so, uh, it, and it's actually in the press release. It's, we're doing exactly what we've done in years past, which is press release. I think it's 9 to 3 on, it's not 8, but 9 to 3 on Friday. Let me just pull up the press release to make sure. 9 to 3 on Friday and 12, 9 to noon on Saturday. All right, I'll contact those volunteers and um, and that had to do with the DPW yep. staff. Just we decided that that was the time that that would work for them because they're going to be supporting that. Yes. So that would mean that you have a few more volunteers so you're covering fewer hours. Doing well. Yeah, hopefully they can just juggle or I can juggle them a bit. So nine to three on Friday, nine to noon on, noon on Saturday. Okay. And Rob, you're, you can, um, we have coverage on Saturdays, so you can have the other. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's what I was That's great. Okay. Uh, any questions on the WIP distribution or the plantings? No. Um, okay, I, yeah, let me just see. I'm going through the list that you and I had. Here we got that. Lead school. So you're, um, do you feel like you need at this point um, Rich to be the person to like <laughs> lean on somebody to get some get, get something definitive leads? Or would you be a more effective person at this I point? Can if you if you want to can you email me the? Uh, yeah, I've been in touch with the principal a couple of times, and he 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 was responsive and said, "Oh yeah, I mean it sounded like they're interested." One day he's like, "Oh, tomorrow we have a meeting, and I should be able to." get back to you by the end of the day. I'm sure he's got a ton of things going on, but um, so there, there's, there's been expressed interest, but not sure. I haven't heard back from any of the teachers. If you want to contact Sal directly. If you could send me the, the, the chain of emails that you have sent him, okay. or however you communicate with him, and then I can actually, he's not, they're not working this week, but right. I believe he'll read his email from home. Okay. So I yeah. talked to someone in the school department today, so I'll try to I'll send him an email later time or tomorrow morning okay so you can send it to me because like we don't even know what time they want to start yeah. yeah and that affects when volunteers show up right you know so it's like we really need to just to pin this down at this point that's what i have expressed <laughs> i'm sure you have it's yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay 
Oh, okay. um, yes, I do have a, I just have a, actually it's, a, it's more of a comment to um, all of us who are leading, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I already sent um, a phone message to Jen, but so it's, um, the folks who are leading the elementary school plantings, which is uh, Jay, Rich, Marilyn, Jen, and me. And that is that, I think before we go in and try to teach planting a bear root tree, we should try one ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, because it's just different than what we've experienced. Um, I, I would feel more comfortable doing that, especially because we're, we're, get, we're acting like we know what we're doing. Um, and so I wanted to suggest that sometime next week, <laughs> with bare wood trees, I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. So um, I wanted to suggest that sometimes next week, we just all get together and quickly try planting one of those trees. Somewhere. And you know, if Rich and, and Rob, you have a suggested spot. Can we do it on Wednesday? What's your availability now, Jack? Marilyn just, Marilyn has a very, very restricted schedule because she works two jobs. So. I try to work around her schedule. Wednesday's actually a great day. Oh, shoot. Um, I'm, I'm going to be in New Hampshire by noon. I, I could do it early morning. I, I have until 11 a.m. and then I'm going to be in New Hampshire all afternoon for my job. Yeah. Or Thursday's open. Well, Thursday, um, the DPW crew is going to already be planting the, preparing the sites. Okay. Um, and so, in fact, you know, if you want to invite them along, especially Tony or something, you know, whoever's sure. going to be leading it. Yep. Um, is that what we're going to do? Yeah, we'll be fine. So, okay. what time? Um, I think that, okay, so if we could just say Wednesday morning and then I check in with Jen and hope that. She can slide into that, and I can find out what time works for her. Okay. So there would be a site that I can think of off the top of my head, right. like on North Street or way out in Florence. I don't know which is better, like Florence Center or North Street, for the group to get together. Um, is this a setback planner? Yeah, they're 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 those are setback. Well, actually, um, uh, no. The one in Florence is not a setback planning, It's kind of, but it's in a nice wide space. Yeah. In plenty of space, yeah. large space, and the one in uh, our street. Well, it's, there's a place where there's no sidewalk and a wide right of way. Okay. So you've got like uh, probably plus the person's yard just goes into it, so it's big space. And uh, that would be in Florence on North Maple. And then okay. uh, on North Street, the very large yards uh, went away from the street. The only thing I'm thinking about setback is that we should probably get the property owner's permission for like seven people descending on there. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's better to, to Is there one more in that park in Florence? I thought I heard you talking about that. Uh, Sojourner? Sojourner Truth Park? Yeah, that's going to be a ginkgo. So that won't be from that. It won't be from the bear root. It's going to be from... Andrew's I can come up with... Okay. I just don't have it in my head where all, all the bear root trees are going. So I can't... Uh, I can think... So we're, we're preferring a tree that goes in the uh, public right away. I mean, Not necessarily. If you think that you could quickly get in touch with that property owner and just say, "Hey, we're gonna, we'd love to plant," easily. Okay. Well, then do you want to just be in touch with us, and we'll have that as our our plan, well, and then maybe create a backup plan if that doesn't. Uh, North Maple is good. You have to park alongside the cemetery or something. It's a little or a wood or something. You mean uh, you mean a, a mean two ninety six at the end? Uh, two, no, I was thinking of uh, one hundred eight. I think it's one hundred eight or one fifty. I'll send you a Bardwell. What? Bardwell Street? I'm not sure. Okay. So basically, we're going to do on street parking wherever we go. Yeah. Unless we. Okay. Well, that's not a problem. I'm going to ride my bike. Okay. So I'll just send an email okay. to confirm that I've spoken to them. In that. Okay. How long do you think that would take? Like about an hour or so? Half an hour. Yeah. Um, and I, I would just like for all of us to refer to this again. Um, there is a section, you know, because we're. Again, we're new to this. Um, there is a section here on um, planting day, um, and so that that would be helpful. And this might, um, if we're, I, I'd love for us to talk about, you know, if we're going to teach these kids. Um, do, do you want me to dig in now about like the running one of these plantings for the classroom? Is this a good time? Yeah. What do you? What do you? Well, I was just thinking um, that. 
the two the two things that I wanted to emphasize, and Jay, feel free to chime in with your thoughts. I want to keep this really simple because they're little kids. But um, the two things that I just wanted to emphasize are what are the benefits of trees, and just have like a very very brief three to five minute conversation about all the ways trees are good for our community and for us and for habitat. Really. And then the other thing is how to how to plant a tree properly and how to care for it in its first year. And, you know, in the most distilled, you know, basic way. So, um, planting a barrow tree is a little different than planting the trees that other, you know, people might see, but um, I think there are some, you, you know, universal truths. Like, don't dig too deep, dig wider than, than deep, and, um, you know, setting, setting the, um, the tree at, at ground level and everything. So if you want to sort of come up with those distilled points that we all make sure we're hitting, okay. that would be really helpful. Mm -hmm. And then and then the other thing that I just wanted to emphasize to the kids is um, that you can't just plunk a tree in the ground and then go, okay, well, good luck, um, that, that it requires some proper mulching and then lots of watering in its first year. So Maybe if you, Jay, if you could come up with those talking points that we could share with all the um, the folks who are leading the planting, that would be good. Okay, and I'll have that for Wednesday. Okay, all right. And then this will just um, everybody. You can find this on the on the web uh, um, in Cornell. If you just Google Cornell Bear Root, it comes right up. There's also a, there's a I watched a good you know it's I think it's a good video, uh, 15 minute video uh, put out by Cornell. Yeah. Bear root process yeah. from beginning to beginning to end, and uh, including volunteers. But I thought it was interesting. It really kind of ran along the lines of what um, we're trying to do. And they uh, worked with the city forester for the city of Ithaca, and actually had uh, hundreds of bear root trees that were planted. Yeah. So that, that's also when you type in Cornell bear root planting, that video uh, find will come up. So it might be a couple 15 minutes of your time. Might be worth it. Yeah. I think you've watched it. Yeah. So six years old or so, six or seven years old, but the process I don't think has changed. Okay, that's that's all I wanted. Okay, to great. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, Lynn. Um okay, so as far as uh handouts, do you wanna talk about what you've ordered so far? Uh, for the for the materials, um, we're gonna order twenty uh, the Fandex guides. You guys which, familiar with those? Which are the little Fandex tree identification guides for, for kids. They're offered through ISA. And what are the, what, it's called a Fandex tree you identification. Give one to each class? We're going to give, uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to give one to you, uh, two because there's two classrooms. Yeah. So we'll get, mm -hmm. for each class, there'll be two guides, and then we're going to, Marilyn's suggestion was to uh, have uh, one donated to each of the school libraries so the students had them. And then, uh, we're going to order the 200 uh, tattoos for the kids. What kind of tattoos? Um, I'm going to bring a, uh, ones that say trees are, trees are good. Trees are good. Tree, trees are good, I think, from ISA. It's whatever they have on their website. Trees are cool is what you said. Trees, trees are cool or trees are good? Yeah. Trees are okay. good is a yeah. slogan. Oh, it is? Yeah. And Jay, you had some other tattoos. Yeah, like we could get some emerald ash borer tattoos. Where are you getting those from? Asian one, MDR, MDR. Oh. So I'll order those. And they also have some things on uh, how to check a tree. I thought we could get uh, what, the, what the insects look like. And they have a, a nice poster of maple trees and another one about beetles. We could get a copy for each classroom and oh. give those out to the teachers too. Okay. Sure. I'll add that to the yeah. spreadsheet online, Willie. But we're not, but there's no expectation, Jay, that we're explaining any of that content. No, we're just handing them the some more information okay. the teacher okay. can use. And what bare root trees are we planting at each tree? At each I school? think I put that on the spreadsheet. Did you? I, okay. I thought I, I if I didn't I will. All right. Because we did determine that. Um, um, Rich was just making some changes to that today, right? Uh, it got on the spreadsheet. Um, well, 
Well, I'm looking at it now, and I see that I didn't fill in the spreadsheet, so I will do that. But yeah, the change is that, um, you know, we got a little pushback from one of the schools about planting at a really awesome spot. Yes, it did seem awesome. <laughs> um, we're not, like, we're going to lose this battle, but we're going to circle back to it because, sure. you know, I think it's, well. <laughs> Right. Anyway, um, so we had chosen elms because it was such a beautiful spot, and right. it's kind of a waste of elms. Right, so I think Rich is turning the elm back in, to the, yeah. and there are places that are looking for it. Yeah. Uh, they're asking. So, so I'm just wondering. With, actually, I do have them there. Okay, so that's. They're on the spreadsheet, including yeah, the are. latest change? Uh, no, I'll make that change. So um, mm -hmm. uh, leaves is going to be. Um, what do we decide little leaf lindens now? Leeds? Yeah. No. I'm sorry, I don't mean leaves. I meant um, Jackson Street School. Yeah, little leaf lindens is one of those. Yeah. Two of the Okay. And then Rob's going to find a home for the two uh, homeless athletes. Right. So the other schools are still the same. I haven't changed. And right. I got approval today from the school grounds crew about the locations that leads. So we're good with that. So, okay. yeah. so Lily, if you could send me the school one, just because I have it written down too, I just want to make sure I've got it. Okay, um, you know Jesus. what, I'm going to just make sure I share this uh, whole Google spreadsheet with you. It's, That'd be great. There's numerous tabs at the bottom, so yeah. just go to elementary school plantings and then scroll over to trees. Yeah. Um, do you have a specific question now that I can answer? No, it's just that I'm, I'm keeping track of all the trees and where they go. Okay, oh, I see. For the, all the stuff I plan, and so anything that goes to the school is subtracted from that. That's all. It's got nothing to do with the schools. Right? And Rich has informed me that just as long as it's all written down, we can all see the same sheet. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's all I've got on the Arbor Day. I'm going to be following up with all the volunteers. I'll update the spreadsheet, and we just need to <coughs> order and get the um, materials. We're going, to, we're, going to pre, we're going to pre bag what the last year all the whips. So your crew is going to do that. Yeah, we're going to do that next week. And you've got table and yep, table. Just, we've got tables. We're going to put tables on the okay. last and year. We never heard back from any of the schools regarding poster contest. No, didn't hear a thing. From so anybody. that's not going to happen. Um, the last thing is just Arbor Day related is the, um, the planting in front of the cedar chest. Yeah. Um, I did see the sculpture. It looks like it's fallen over a little bit. So maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, the gold paint looked great on when it first went up. And yeah. It's aging, but it looked. Well, I better. think it actually got knocked. Right, but I mean, the paint's also aging. It was like, it looked like solid gold. Oh, did it? It did. Oh, oh. And I it's see. probably it's absorbing the weather's hitting it, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I thought it looked good. And I, I thought the sign actually looked just fine. I don't think we need a investment sign. Um, but um, you are, we have a little bit more flexibility about when to, when to plant that. And Richard, do you want to just say a word about that? Um, I'm just going to work with uh, Jody, uh, Jody Toll, who's the contact person right, from the uh, Thorns. And uh, we're just going to pick a time, I think, because the employees want to kind of be involved to a certain degree, whether it's helping or having uh, a photo opportunity with the tree going in that day. The day before that, we're going to dig out the tree well take all that soil out of there and replace it with some fresh soil. Um, Are you planning uh, to plant on the 29th, Rich? We're going to plant it on Arbor Day. I think oh. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to have enough time and it also gives some flexibility as well. Uh, I, I'm trying to get the, I'm also trying to get the mayor to be involved at some level, uh -huh. uh, either giving out whips for a time period or being involved in planting. Whether he can make the time to travel to a school or the cedar chest planting might be a little more uh, flexible for him. Um, just trying to kind of make that all work, so that's kind of moving. And Jody's on vacation this week, so. Do we have a photographer who could capture all this? Well, I sent out a press release, but one of the things I could follow up with is just like a photo I mean, opportunity release. Yeah. Um, and and just flag it. Really, I'll just send the same press release, but I'll just flag it again. To, I think it's fine. It's, it's now out there, so I don't think it's fine if I contact the Gazette sure. and say, hey, just so you know, there's going to be so many great opportunities to take photographs. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll do that. But 
were you talking about like just another one of us taking photographs? Yeah, I mean we all have cameras on our phones, but I didn't know if anybody knew a good photographer or somebody who could maybe circulate that day and just snap a few. Well, my friend Angie, who is, is a volunteer yeah. at two of the things, is a great photographer. Is she? Okay. So if you want to, um, yeah, I'll when, ask you, her. when you contact her, ask her to bring her camera. Okay. Well, I imagine that folks at the Cedar Trust are excited about this. This is a real tangible thing happening. Yeah, yeah they are. They actually had a press release. Yeah, but really. Did you see it? No, did it get in the paper? I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't either. Okay, so they had their own press release that basically, um, Went into greater detail. Yeah, about that particular planting and the marking sculpture and um, how they're running their product line and the first month's profits will go towards the purchasing of the tree. So mm -hmm. we're going to provide them with the tree and they're going to actually deposit about $500 into the tree warden's account. So I have that money to put towards uh, you know other trees, even on Main Street. That's going to be good leverage too when we yeah. approach other businesses. Oh, well, I yeah. think so. I think it hopefully, and one of my, my comment was that I think it hopefully will turn into some kind of a model. Uh -huh. You know, even though they're talking about Main Street could effectively get developed within the next 10 years or redeveloped. Uh, and that was the conversation we had with Phil. I, like I think they said 10 to 20 years. Was it 10? I, I'm, I'm hoping on 10. Okay. That means I'll be here for yeah. yeah. um, But I'm hoping that, uh, you know, if we plant trees now and they're actually become you know decent sized trees in ten years and they actually do well, then hopefully we can keep them and they won't have to be removed or destroyed because of uh, construction. So Yeah. So I'm hoping and then there's other businesses downtown that have also approached me about planting um, wanting trees planted in the tree wells that are empty in front of their buildings and we haven't been very successful just because of the nature of uh, the amount of abuse that the trees take and also I also Think because of poor uh, site conditions, but you know, speaking locusts are pretty hardy. Oh, sorry. Okay. Speaking of photography, photo ops, I'm wondering if it might be worth, if, if we anticipate that this is a model, and that even if Main Street gets redeveloped within 10 to 20 years, I'm re I'm reminded of that presentation that you did, though, like the before and after photos. Yeah. Like this is the way the city used to look. This is how it looks now. If we took some photos of Main Street, how it is now, and then maybe each year take a photo of any, like even if we selected a short segment of Main Street, like from the railroad mm -hmm. uh, bridge to I don't know where Edwards Churches or something. Um, we, we can show like year to year mm -hmm. more plantings, more growth, mm -hmm. and then when they are planning the reconstruction, we can say, well, well look what's been done just in 10 years and be part of the planning process. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. They just say so much. Yeah, they do. If that is, by the way, the part you're talking about, Holly Street to oh. State Street. That, oh, that's it. That's the okay. scope. So you pretty much need scope. <laughs> Well, and, and we know that, that you know, 10 years could be 20 years, so if they do nothing, and, and at least we provided the city with 10 years of greenery and shade along Main Street, yeah, yeah. that would have been worthwhile. I'm not a, I'm not a proponent of not, of not populating the tree wells because of what ifs. Yeah. They say we populate the tree wells, and if the trees make it, then there you go. Now the plan has to be worked around the tree that exists. Yeah. All right, I'm going to move us on because I just realized I have two other things that I want to talk about in other business, so, um, but I don't want to get us off track. All right, anything else with regard to Arbor Day? No. no. Marilyn, when do you think, of, I know you're really super busy, when do you think you'll be able to populate that Google spreadsheet with all that information that you have? I will have that done before I go to bed tonight. Okay. Yep. Awesome. It's just cut and paste. Thank you very much. Just make me Oh, yeah, yeah. Me too. Okay. I'm going to a climate change film tonight after the meeting, but when I get back on it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, can you in the meantime just send him what you got? Do you have that? I, I have oh, it. Oh, okay, all right. I have it, the, uh, the Excel spreadsheet? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I have it, yeah. All right. Okay, tree inventory. So, by the way, Virginia, just to let you know, we were awarded the highest amount um, from the 
state to conduct a, we, we applied for a matching grant for up to $30,000, we were awarded $30,000 to finally conduct a thorough tree inventory of this city. Yeah, yeah, so that's what we're talking about next, is putting out an RFP. Okay. So that's your question. So, first and foremost, I'm still waiting for the packet of information from DCR, so I really can't, I can write the RFP, start to draft the RFP, but I still have to actually have a contract with DCR, uh, so I can't, you know, my, my goal is to have the RFP written, have it approved by Joe Cook, who's our chief procurement officer, and then once we sign the contract with DCR, after we've reviewed the document as well, Joe's reviewed it, then we can send it off to the um, I don't know when the state, I probably ought to send an email to Julie Coop to find out where that thing is, because that was, uh, Mayor will have to sign that document because it is a, a legally binding contract. So um, we really can't we really can't deviate too much in the RFP specs from what is in the DCR grant. So it's actually considered a horizontal design services. So because we told DCR that we were going to actually bid, go out to bid for it, we have to go out to bid for it. If we had said that we were going to go out and get three quotes, all you have to do is quote it, which means we don't have to have a bid. Oh dear. So Things we, you learn after the fact. Right. So we, we wrote it in a, what a normal, yeah. you know, you would want to actually go with the, obviously the, the lowest bid, but it's also with a company that's reputable. Uh, we also have to write things in there uh, that's, you know, ask, uh, you know, basically state that the company has to have has had to have had completed X, Y, and Z amount of inventories uh, uh, with the in inventories of each of these communities, uh, with trees in excess of 8,000, just so we are getting, you know, apples to apples. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting some company that says they've done a tree inventory but only have done maybe 500 and not to the technical scale that we would like. So it's, most of the information for the RFP is actually in the PCR grant. And it's just basically pulling it out putting it on a, a city bid document and then uh, circulating it for our review and then actually getting, once it's okay, we'll get it to Joe. Do we so, have to go with the lowest bidder? What? You have to go with the lowest bidder unless you what, can, unless you. What if somebody you, has something better to offer, but if they're a little You bit have to write two things. You have to write the bid basically the way exactly that you want. So if you have a company in mind that you like to do business with, um, the problem is that you can't, you can't single out that one company. You have to write a basically generic bid, and you master procurement law requires basically allows any company to bid on it, and then we will choose among the bidders uh, who is the lowest bid and who meets the qualifications. So the but you can you can get around that by being really clear about the qualifications. Yes, that's why you really want to be very technical. That's why I like Joey to do all the bids before they go yeah. anywhere. Okay, so we'll, so how are we doing timeline-wise? Are you going to bring to us or email us a, uh, a draft RFP for a review? Yep. Okay, because, you know, as we said before, we can cer certainly we can't take away anything that we've put in our application, but we could augment or clarify things, such as um, choices of um, plantable sites, you know, where we want that, that contractor to focus. And I, I, I would love for us to be clear about that. Do we want, we want, you know, we talked about this before. We want them to focus on areas where we really think trees would have the greatest public benefit. Okay. We can, and then we can one, and then one more question is, if we're, if it's within our budget, can we go to greater than a thousand trees? You know, we talked about asking them to identify a thousand tree planting sites in mm -hmm. addition to doing the tree inventory. Was that too low? You know, like, might there be 1,500 sites? I mean, Amherst, Amherst had 2,000 sites, although they're struggling to, to fill the last. And, uh -huh. and some of those were setbacks, I think. They had no. 2,000 trees. You know? oh. I believe they had 2,000 trees, and many of them were setbacks. Oh, you're right. You're now, right. Now, so I don't really have a sense, though, of how many yeah. uh, um, trees could be populated. Pardon? I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't have a sense of how many tree belts can be populated. 
But if we are planting under wire, there's a lot of yeah. that. Um, that's where that's where there are many, many, many trees. So true. And I you, think we you just have to set up the program with you know check boxes for you know size of tree belt and have choices. So it's drop down boxes. It wouldn't take a lot more time to do more. It's just as they're going along. No, it wouldn't, but if you were going to put an RFP out there that says you want a thousand planting sites and then the bids come back in lower than expected, what you do is you would award the bid to the uh, lowest bidder who was, meets the minimum qualifications and then you would actually uh, make a change order in the contract. Uh, so once a person, you're allowed to make a percentage of change orders in a contract uh, when you have uh, items that you want to add. So what they would do is uh, it's, I think you're only allowed to change. You're only allowed to increase it by 10%. It depends what kind of procurement contract it is. There's multiple ranges. It's either going to be 10, 15, or 25 thousand dollars, or 25 percent, that you can actually adjust the contract without having to go out to rebid it legally. So you can do it. But it sounds very good to keep it low so that we get a bid that we can accept and then, and then bring it. Bring well, it up. I, I don't really think we can deviate too much from what we actually ask for in. DCR grant. I think we have to really kind of use that as because DCR gave us is going to give us the money, providing we follow exactly what we said we're going to do. In right there. Yeah, the and I feel I feel good about the 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 clarity that we had around the inventory itself. Mm -hmm. What I feel where there's a lot more room for be disappointment that we're not going to get what we want is is the identifying planting sites. And so, should we just reach out to Molly and ask for advice about what specifically to be asking for? for I'm happy to do that. For individual. For for when we when we um, word the RFP with regard to identifying planting sites, yep. like like Jay was saying, like do we want them to, um, like, yeah, just what kind of information do we want around that, and where do we want them to focus? So. And I think what Rich is saying, though, is that we can send the bid out without the specifics that Molly might add. And then if there's room within the, the money left within what we can afford, you, then you can put it in. You have to go the, it's the other way. You have no. to write specifically what you want. Yeah. Because you can't change you can't change the bid document once it's already been written and people have bid on it. You can't change it. So if you have a 1,000 planting sites that you have recommended based on the criteria, you know, of... Uh, Clearance, uh, hardscape damage, above ground utilities, growing space observations, all those kind of things. You know, yeah. size of size of the tree, tree belt, belt right. um, closest large tree next to it, so you know if you're going to have a shadowing issue. Right. Um, you need to write all those things down in the original bid. Mm -hmm. That goes to whatever vendors yep. decide to pick it up. And you say, I would like a thousand of these sites located within a uh, ten mile radius of City Hall. Let's say, for example, we decided to do that and we just want to do downtown, just as an example. The bid comes in lower than we expected right. and we have seventy-five to $80,000 to spend. We can actually say, okay, we're going to award the bid to you, but we're, our change order is going to be we want to identify 1,500 sites. Right. So you, you can't change the bid criteria. Okay. In other words, you can't right. change the bid specification, Thanks, but you can change the amount of work that they do within that specification. Great. That makes uh, sense. So would would that be helpful to you if I contact Molly, or do you prefer to do that yourself? No, I, I can I can contact her because okay. um, I'm also going to ask her if she has a cache of other um, uh, bid documents yeah. that other communities use. So I'll, I'll send me notes. Okay. And then can we talk about the timeline for yeah. this? Um, so the timeline really is, you know, according to our grant, we really have to have this, everything has to be done by November of this year, 2016, November, December. Um, but obviously depending upon, that's why it's important to have the RFP written. So as soon as DCR sends the contract information and we sign the contract, the mayor's got the LTE, the money will be transferred. I'm hoping, uh, I'm not sure it's going to be done tomorrow's council meeting or the next council meeting. I need to contact some more. Right. Um, the timeline would be uh, during, during, this, during the summer months. Um, of this. And so 
we basically would have everything done and completed and wrapped up by September, early October. And then you would uh, basically pay the vendor from the account that we have. And then once we have paid the vendor and the vendor pro uh, produces the uh, information that we've asked them to, uh, the actual inventory, and it's uploaded, because they're going to upload it into the city's GIS system for us, then we, we will actually turn around and actually uh, fill out the grant app, uh, the grant reimbursement portion of our grants, we got our monies back. So by next, early next winter, early next December, we could have a really nice working document. Um, Andy, uh, Keith are in our department, uh, has already been working on a GIS uh, map for the trees that we planted uh, this past year. And uh, a couple of, he's tried to incorporate a couple other layers, but so he, we're gonna build upon that. And this inventory will be just another layer on top of that tree map. So that's a work in progress as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I, sorry, I may have tuned out for a second there when Jen okay. came in, but I so I'm just trying to if it's going to be if we look look to it be completed by sometime in November. Working backwards, do we have a sense? Have we contacted any um, contractors to say eight thousand trees, a thousand planting sites? Can you give us a rough idea of how long that takes? No, I have not. Done that. So that might be a good question because then we can go. Okay, bump bump. We need to have them start by this date, and then bump bump. Well, we need to have like you know. I always love to like w work backwards from. Put it in the RFP. You just tell them it has to be done between this and this, and that's the way it is. Well, but you know, we might eliminate really good contractors who are like, that's impossible. Like, I'm not going to bid on this because it's it's humanly impossible to do it in six weeks. So I just think that we should get a, 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 a just a sense of how long it takes. So the deadline in November is due to the just an agreement that we have with BCR. Yep. You know, they, they would like to see, once the grant's been awarded, they like to see it done within that season. That's how I read the, that's how I read the grant. I'm sure we could probably file for an extension um, if, uh, if needed, but I, I don't know much about that. I can ask you all that as well. Um, yeah, just when, so um, in two weeks we'll have another meeting. Do you, do you see that at the, as when the RFP will be kind of ready to go? It'll probably be in draft form by that point. And I'll bring it to the commission for the commission to review. Okay. And then it will go to Joe Cook. Okay. That would be my goal. All right. It's kind of a lofty one, but I'll get it done. Okay. this is kind of important. Yeah, this is a big one. So that's going to be our next meeting. It is May. First week of May is like May 3rd, is that? Or 4th? 4th? Yeah. 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 You know, this is not right in front of our headlights. We could either go, that looks good, let's send it on the way, or we could go, we got too much on our plate, let's not think about this now, and I'll table it for later. So I'm fine either way. Is there anything urgent? Not at all. This is not urgent at all. It, it seems that this winter we'll be looking at the inventory results and we'll want perhaps then to really be thinking about the lighter. I don't know if that can work. Delaying, I don't know if saying something to Wayne way in advance is necessary. Mm -hmm. Sure, um, I'm happy to um, to say what I could do do is say preliminarily these were our our thoughts, but we really would love to have the tree inventory in to see if there's new information that 
that we're not getting from the tree inventory that we could get from LIDAR. Can, you, can we circle back to you? There's nothing, they're going to do the LIDAR anyway, right? Or they no. have done They it. have already done it. Yeah. So they're, they're doing data analysis. analysis. Oh, so he's just asking, hey, do you want... What he wants to focus on. Yeah, yeah he says, I see. Okay. I'm happy to do a tree, you know, a tree canopy analysis. Mm -hmm. What do you want us to focus on? And this is where, in our spreadsheet, we came up with things like hospitals, public right-of-way, school mm -hmm. grounds, mm -hmm. um, parking lots, low income housing complex, downtown business district, waterways, urban residential districts. And um, that's so Can Maybe percent tree canopy by ward or something like that, or district nice. area. So we had to bring it up in some way. We had spoken of ward, and then we thought maybe um, zoning uh, zones. By like zoning, zoning districts? Districts. I don't know if he's got money to be able to okay. evaluate the data right now. You know what I'm saying? I'll find out. Yeah, because if it's right. if it's that, then if he's, he's doing it for us, he's got some intern right. or something in there crunching numbers, and they're only going to be here till July. Then I'd say give them whatever we got. You know. And I don't know. Yeah, otherwise, the inventory might 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 raise <laughs> questions. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. All right. So, you feel comfortable with me telling the way you what just described? Yeah. Great. Okay. I'll do that then. Um, let's see. All right. I'm going to just circle back since Jen is just coming to the room. Um, we, you know, we spent a good while discussing Arbor Day. Mm -hmm. By the way, did you get my phone? I did. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just I was driving. And yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. No, of course. Yeah. And um, and so we actually uh, everyone in this room can make next Wednesday morning. The, we have two possible sites where we could do a practice bare root planting. Mm -hmm. So that we go into our elementary school. Right. Practice. Right. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. But I teach from eight to noon on Wednesdays. Yeah. So I could do. I could do Monday uh, afternoon, later afternoon, Tuesday's kind of trash. Wednesday. You later can only do Wednesday, right? Wednesday, I could do later Wednesday afternoon. morning up until 11. You, I um, could do it with you, just you and I. So. Oh, that would work. Yeah. yeah. Would, you, would you be there for ours too? Yeah. Okay, great. My, okay. I'll okay. you now. Is that all right? I don't get sure if that's maybe one. One's a good time. Monday's good. Oh, we, yeah. We, let's just talk at the end of the meeting. We well, some people wanted to go to one rather than the other. We'll we'll let you know when it's going to be. Okay. All right. Okay. Unless you want to spend let's, air time now doing that. Since well, we are a little bit ahead of schedule, so that would be fine. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah. Monday Monday afternoon is fine. I could do. As far as I know. Okay. When uh, were you calling after? Oh, uh, like. Later afternoon would be easier, like three or something. Probably three at the earliest. I get that. Yeah, that's when I get out of work. So. Okay. Does that work? That would work for me. Okay. And we'll just find where we're going to meet. Or I'm, I'm going to make sure the site is expecting us in the email. Okay. For and the trees are here already? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, so you healed them in? We buried them. Buried them. Okay. The whole per, thing. Per, the whole tree. Per Jay's recommendation. In a pile of mulch. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Oh, try and keep they from starting, now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, what time you guys? What time did you say? So you be in North. You could be in Northampton at three. Okay. Yeah. So I can get to Northampton. Okay. Or we could do three thirty if that is easier for you. you know, I get out at three, so let's three fifteen. Okay. That's easy. That's good. <laughs> okay, so there's one at 3.15 on Monday. So let's just say anyone can choose between these one, these two things. 3.15 on Monday, and Je um, Jay and Jen will definitely be there. Um, I, I may actually choose to do that one. Um, that one's slightly better for me. And then the other one is Wednesday, Jay, what time? Morning before 11? Is that doable, Jay? Yeah. I could do, I mean, as early as 7, 7, 8, 9, 10. Early risers in here? Yeah. Um, 
Eight sounds good. Excellent. Okay. So the other one work. is. So that's good. That New York Blue has two options too. Yeah. yeah. So definite people who are going to that are J. Are you going to that one, Rob? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rob and Marilyn. Yeah. By the way, did I, has anyone heard from Andrew? Did you hear from no. Andrew? No. Yeah. Well, he usually sends an email if he's not going to be here, but that's not the case. All right. Uh, we have a lot of time for other business. We could also uh, conclude a little early and maybe the task that you wanted to do with getting that on the spreadsheet, you could do before we leave, that sort of thing. So we're in other business not reasonably anticipated, and I actually have, I have two things, but I'm also happy to hear what other people might want to talk about. Are there any topics? I just have to get with you, Marilyn, about the type of materials you want. I'm not quite, All right. I don't really yep. understand. Jay, is also right. Maybe talk with Jay as well, because he was gonna help a little bit. We, we were just having a conversation about the kinds of um, the quick education we're going to do at the time of planting. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I just saw as classroom time would be an opportunity to first introduce those concepts and then reinforce them. To get to give stuff to teachers. It would be great. Right. For the oh, teachers okay. to first have a conversation with the kids about all the ways trees benefit us. Okay. And then how to plant, and then the, the planting a tree, caring for a tree in the, in, when it's planted in the first year of life. So just introducing those concepts and then we reinforce them in the flesh. Okay. On um, um, planting day. Okay, so the, the, um, the two things that I wanted to share um, was it just keeps coming back to us folks. And this is the issue of the conflict with solar installation and shade trees. It's coming up again. Um, someone who, um, did you determine, it's on, uh, what's Private. it, Gleason? Private. A 40 plus inch. 41 inch. 41 inch sugar maple. Mm -hmm. um, it's, just, it's just on the private property side of someone's front yard uh, on Gleason Street. They're gonna have it removed for solar installation. And you've been talking with um, the arborist. Who is the arborist? The, was it uh, sort of a D? I think you mentioned that. You mentioned it, but I thought you also did. You, you've you been speaking with an arborist who says that it's a big part of his oh, business. Oh, Dan Dossel. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's a big part of his business. Can, yeah. I, can I, if it's on private property, how is, how are we involved? Well, we're not. Question. But well, it's, it's a question. Let me just answer that so rough. So what happens is a lot of residents call and they ask to provide a service request for a determination. Right. So they're not sure before they want to remove these kind of trees, and they're not sure they will contact our office. Service requests will be made by Terry, which goes to our engineering department, and then engineering actually goes out and determines the streets right away. And then if it's a city tree, then there's obviously we you know the process that they have to go right. through. If it's a private tree, uh, it's uh, it's up to them to remove it. This tree in this particular case, unfortunately, um, is kind of in poor health. Mm -hmm. um, but someone has spent a lot of time and money actually cabling this tree to try to keep it together. It's a multi-meter tree, yeah, but it has a lot of defects in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it has carpet ants. Um, you know, so if it were a city's tree, I wouldn't recommend cutting it down at this particular time. It would have to be a lot of maintenance when you done to it. Um, but if it's a private tree, it's obviously I can only weigh in with the sense that I have the email in my inbox. I haven't answered it yet. It came this week, but I am going to attach um, a spreadsheet for my tree. To basically show them what the benefit of the tree is mm -hmm. that they're going to about to remove and what the benefit, how much it's saved uh, in heating and cooling that particular dwelling, which is about from 1950. It was like a couple hundred thousand dollars, just kind of an informational piece. Mm -hmm. They kind of just say, you know, this is by cutting this tree down, this is what you are going to be removing, what you're going to be removing, what it's done already, Oxygen. plus all the carbon sequestration. Right. You know? And then if we project the tree will live another 30 years, then you can do a projection as to what. Going to save in the future. Yeah, right. yeah. So always like um, providing the I tree uh, tree benefit calculator for right. folks. The service to a citizen that helps them make the right decision, which yeah. they will make. But I, I want to add that um, a lot of families do go on roofs, but there are opportunities 
in Western Massachusetts to uh, own a part of a tree farm. I mean, a solar, solar farm. Mm -hmm. And you know, at my house, I didn't want to cut the trees down, and I own part of a so this so is off -site solar this farm. is feeling more and more like an op-ed piece mm -hmm. or something. Like I mm -hmm. just feel like we need to go out there and say, "Hey, folks, a whole other perspective on this that you may not even it may not even have occurred to you." Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, um, I'm just, that's where I, and, and let, I just want to share with you that an email that I just got with another ordinary citizen um, who's up on Hospital Hill. They're really facing a devastating amount of tree removal in, um, in preparation for, and this is all out of our purview, totally out of our purview because it's all private property, it's a development project. Um, and, it, you know, it's a really great co-housing um, complex that wants to be net zero and to do that they're having to cut down a tremendous number of trees to provide the the sun for yeah. all the, the solar panels and what she just said is um uh, part of the problem interestingly is solar who knew solar offset and the economic benefits therein justify cutting down an entire forest if necessary um, and you guys know what the Hospital Hill yeah. forest is like. It's like gorgeous, like 60 plus inch beech trees. It's just huge, huge trees. People completely forget about the other benefits of trees. They're so involved in doing a good thing economically and not using oil. Trouble is trees and woods have such incredible importance for our planet. I've been to multiple meetings in the past few years where some good folks have been pushing cutting trees to accommodate solar and have been unconcerned about replanting. It's sad that people can't see both sides of this. Anyway, part of this process is education, so I guess I have to keep being the squeaky wheel. Um, parenthetical remark that's not important. Um, not my most comfortable place. Thanks for doing what you're doing. And then I said to her, with your, um, with your permission, can I share your comments to the commission? And she said, yes, please. So, um, you know, I, I'm feeling more and more like we need to get in front of this with an educational campaign, just much more proactively. And I'd be willing to um, make an attempt at drafting an op-ed piece that we could co-author, that I could co-author with Rich, you know, something like that, um, where we just zoom out a little bit and help people make in a, a, an informed calculation Perhaps we can have a little information piece on our website for starters also. Like don't make this sun versus trees. Like like try to because the last thing we want is two environmental efforts to be battling one another. Right. And also I think we can include options. Rob was talking about where there are yes. other options. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, thinking about this for a long time and I was like talk to people um, after my semester is over I can probably I can't like do it now you know but I'd be definitely interested in okay in writing I have really strong feelings about this I just feel like uh, you know people just you know I am very very pro solar I've had three different groups come to my house to see if I could put solar panels on my house and I have two yeah. giant mm -hmm. sugar maples, just like the ones that, that, that's getting taken down, and I've had them cabled and pruned, and I'm like limping it. They're definitely on their way out, you know, but I'm keeping them there for yeah. as long as I can keep them there, you know? So uh, um, I'd be very interested. Okay. I, I do think it is time, like for a op-ed piece, I think just, Hey, you know, think about this. Yeah. You know, before, before you know, bow, there is there's more more information to weigh, and I don't think I think you know there's those tree calculators that anybody can use. You know, the daily tree calculator. No one can. I'm not sure about I tree. If you can go on without. Yeah, you can. Has anybody seen report. any any information about this in any other? I googled it. Very, I, you know, I I googled the question like solar versus yeah. trees and so forth, and I find that so far what I found is just from PV insulation companies mm -hmm. that have their particular slant. Mm -hmm. So I can I can do some more nosing around. Though. Yeah, I I don't I have more information on the end of the benefits. Yeah, you know, right, right. I think I thought what was sad is that you know I. I Making connections with some of the fellows in the uh, who do you know our culture for living, like Dan Dostal, he said to me that 
He planted one tree last year. As a matter of fact, Rob and I went, we're at Bigelow Nursery and Dan was there looking for the one tree that he planted. The rest of his work was in the Amherst Nursery. Huh? Amherst Nursery. Oh, it's Amherst Nursery. I'm sorry. That's right. I was, I was there too. You were there. Sorry. Mm -hmm. The rest but, of his work is, is taking them down. No, it's just my thought process is, is that these guys are going around and I, I just observed a huge oak being cut down on Hinkley Street up on private property on top of the on top of Baker's Hill um, there's a large oak when you first drive off Hinkley Street and Ontic Street and you go up this person's long driveway there's a city tree that's sitting there that has been people have asked to have cut down which I won't cut it down it's just too magnificent but there was a private tree farther up probably seated at the same time that one did and that one's gone now Cotton Tree Service was removing it but I don't know for what reason I didn't inquire mm -hmm. um, that it looked but, like a healthy tree? Yeah, it looked like a healthy tree. I mean, of course, I didn't get close to it, so it could have other structural issues. But it just seems to me that because of the advent of um, solar panels and, you know, people being able to get them at a reasonable price mm -hmm. now, you know, people are just full, you know, they're cutting down the canopy that we don't even have control over. Mm -hmm. And it's just really sad to hear that I've only planted one tree all year. Yeah. You know, oh. so, I mean, if the way things are going, obviously, the people people will still want trees in their yard but there's always going to be this this push and pull mm -hmm. and every time we have a storm mm -hmm. forget it it's mm -hmm. just like oh that tree's going to fall down. in my house yeah. cut it down yeah. how can you assure me it's not going to fall well i can't assure you it's yeah. you know well i want to cut down I'm like well, we're not and it's just this yeah. i mean after 2011 it was like everybody yeah, wanted yeah, everything yeah, cut yeah, down yeah, yeah. right yeah and it's like hold, hold on people we have to pick up the stuff that fell down first and then right. we go one by one and look at it. Right, right, right. Uh, okay, so maybe um, um, you and I, after Arbor Day, we can be thinking of maybe just start a brainstorm. Yeah, of yeah. midway is when I can yeah. okay. I have a, a oh, lot so, more time. So <laughs> earliest would be midway. Yeah, mid, the, okay. mid, yeah the next couple of weeks I have okay. I just have to go. Okay. okay. Good. All right. The other thing that I wanted to talk to people is I also had another person approach me about wanting to memorialize someone's father who just recently died with the tree. And I, I've actually been approached by numbers of people about this subject. And, um, and so I wanted us to think about what a memorial tree program might look like. Um, I, I certainly think that we, it could be a really nice way of <laughs> meeting lots of people's needs and keeping mm -hmm. a, a, um, a fund going for us to, to, to tree plant. Um, so I, I have a specific request from somebody who said, you know, not only will we pay for the cost of installing the tree and the tree, but we'll volunteer to water it for a certain period of time. So. Um, so somebody I, makes a financial donation and then the city plants it. Well, that's that. So that it, it's a tree, it's a memorial tree program, really, yeah. and we have to figure out what that might look like yeah. and what it involves. Does it involve a little, you know, placard? I'm not a big placard fan personally. I'm just it's just not my way. But um, you know, I'd love to. I'd love for us to maybe chew on that and come up with a program and then and then get it out there because I think that people are always looking for a way to create. I know, you know, every time I drive down on Con Street and see that big giant elm, that's like, that's Ed Cotton to me, that tree is. And, um, and I'm sure people feel that way about when a tree's been planted in honor of someone that they love. Maybe instead of a placard, we could do something like the trees planted in front of Smith last year. Um, you know, there's just like little tags and it could just say in memory of and maybe we could come up with some numerical system that people, like, let's just say it's in memory of so-and-so um, with an ID number in our website, and then people could go on our website and access a list, and then the list would be growing over the Green years. Oh, yeah, Green number one. Yeah, so square. Not, yeah, the little, um, the then people called. could, um, yeah. the people who have donated it could then provide language that could go in that, something like that. Yeah, yeah. I see an advantage of having tags because it would be an awareness program. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could put the name of the, of the tree. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe like Smith, and, you know, put the name of the species, and maybe I would put the date of the planet. Oh yeah. My, uh, this data it is being collected by Rich for all trees that were now planting. So I think, um, and 
and there's a map where you can yeah. see it. Uh -huh. But I, I'd love to have tags. Yeah. Well, I love I love tags that have the names of trees. That's an educational thing. Yeah. And if it's just then you know in memory of da 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 da, and then, but I'm just not, I'm not a big fan of the big brass like right. you know ostentatious costs us a lot of money pain right. in the butt. Like if it's just a zip zip tie on a tree, that's that's Maybe, a, you know like that big or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so five things. It could be the name of the tree, the date of the planting, in memory of, um, and then our website. And then a numerical, uh, you know, a number. Okay, that's starting to far feel like a proposal. Do you want to? Do you want to? Maybe there's no rush on this because I know you've got your hands full with Arbor Day, but maybe you want to pull something together, a sure. proposal-ish. All right, and then we can we can let's use it as a starting point. All right, after Arbor Day. I think the labels we use are we can get four lines of information. Four, four lines? lines. Okay. Are there bigger ones available? Probably. <laughs> And then I guess what, what, what we want to also ask ourselves is what kind of money we're asking for and what kind of like upkeep, you know, or if, if, if the person isn't going to do any of the upkeep or whatever, the person paying for this tree, this memory tree, uh, then do we need to increase the amount of money that we're asking for? Mm -hmm. I know Smith, you guys, is big. We charge $5,000 a tree wow. for a memorial plaque. Wow. But do you like but, you pull know, we water it, we on? maintain it. Pretty much guarantee it's going to stay there. Most people don't do. Yeah. It's done. So. Well, that, yeah. That, that could really add up. That could. Not just numerically. And, and have you had people be responsive? Yeah, we have people looking for spots. So. Yeah. We're, we're different audiences here. Yeah, different yeah, yeah, audiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Yes and no, Rob. Um, but let's think about that because I, I realize that then it becomes a little bit of a classist issue yeah. and we want to be careful about that. But on the other hand, we don't want to end up holding the bag, like not being able to care for the trees. That you could have different levels too. You could have you know, like a sponsor, a donor. You know, kind of like a sliding scale, levels. but yeah, yeah. But I, mean, I, I don't think we're holding the bag to the extent that I'm assuming that the trees that we're planting as memorial trees would be trees that we would, would plant anyway. I mean, I don't know if that's true. I think we should start at that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there would be somewhere where we would want a tree. Yeah, right. Well, like, for example, last year the mayor asked if we could plant a tree um, for Lisa Manick, who was a 30 year plus school committee member. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we planted a I think it's Silver Linden in front of JFK School. So that is in that is in memory of her de her dedication to this to the school department. Um, but there's no plaque there. There's no, it was, anything no, it was just something that was presented to her at the <coughs> December school committee meeting. Um, but I think you know my my thought process is, is that when we've had trees that have been dedicated to people that have plaques next to them and the tree fails. There is some kind of level of responsibility on the city's part to actually replace the tree, mm -hmm. because if the residents say, you know, if we use the sliding scale, right. uh, the le the size tree, the level of tree, the level of tree care, it's almost like having a perpetual care fund. That's a in good a sense. point. That's a really. Good it's like what you, but at Smith, it's like a perpetual care fund. You donate five thousand dollars, and perpetuity will take care of this tree yeah. uh, until yeah. it no longer can exist, and then at that point, I'm not going to imagine Smith would probably replace the tree somewhere on campus. Uh, but I I think it would be, it's kind of important because if we do memorial trees and 50 years down the road, they you know they decide to sell Lampern Park and they want to bulldoze it and they want to make condos in there, which I don't think will ever happen. But if you have all these memorial trees that are dedicated to people, you don't really know what they are. And so the meaning for people 50 years down the road is totally lost. So you have to find a way to capture that and make sure that people are aware of it and providing plaques in front of trees is one way of doing it as a more permanent fixture um, to allow people that knowledge plus building a database. But I'm not necessarily in, in favor of having plaques either because first yeah, of all they're around. you can't mow around them. Yeah. They're they're a pain. Um, they actually attract people to actually look at them unfortunately if you think about it compassion factor. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds kind of you know, like, you want them to go to the tree to see who it's for, but then you got 
a whole bunch of people walking across the root system of this tree. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think this is a, I think it distracts from the, the beauty of the, the simplicity of the know, tree, too. I think a simple tag on a tree is fine mm -hmm. um, in dedication and having just a really uh, good, well, have an inventory to work with, have an inventory system, so you can, in GIS, so you can just add another layer. I mean, if we if we just focus on where we would plant trees anyway, and if a tree fails there, we'd replace it anyway, we would have then to, we're not really losing anything. No, we have to have a, a defined policy. Yeah, I agree. So so we're not making rushing into right. anything here. I'm just opening the conversation. Yeah. No. It's a good starting point. Do you do your own tags, or you send them out? We do our own. Uh, so you have a machine. Yeah, a great machine. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely different quality of labels. We're using some that only last two years and they fade so much you couldn't even read them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they made it out of flexible metal. Just, What's that? They made it metal or plastic? They're aluminum. Aluminum? Mm -hmm. The aluminum ones don't ever fade, right? Mm -hmm. they some. There's different qualities. Even with aluminum? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okie okay, dokie, okay. is there any other business? I'm just curious, this is sort of related to trees. Uh, has anybody heard how things are going with the, the new park, Pulaski Park? Uh, well, things are on schedule. Uh, first phase of the park should be done this, I believe, probably sometime this summer. Mm -hmm. And then the phase two, which is not part of phase one, the money was, we the city received another grant to, a matching grant to finish the rest of the park. So. The uh, DPW Engineering Department is working with Stephen Stimson and Associates to uh, get the final design and bid package put together for the phase two of the park, which will include the switchback and the terrace slope protection that go down to the roundhouse parking lot. Um, I was just wondering if there's any opportunity, maybe it's too late, but um, for us to do a tree plant in there as a way to celebrate what they're doing as well trees, as what we're doing? Trees have been designed into yeah. the plan. I I would not think that, that, that would be the best first place for us to do, just because it's, it's, gonna it's have, been it's a well-considered yeah, plan. It's a pretty well-conceived plan, I think, and there's going to be plenty of, there's going to be more trees in the park than there were before when they're done with it. Oh, well, yeah. Provided the existing trees that they've done construction yeah. around will, you know, survive. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, They've, they've been very good. I've gone in there and inspected quite a bit. Good. There's been a couple of times when it's brought to my attention that they were digging a little too close to tree lot tree protection. So I went well, to address them and took care The of one tree I feel like has not been well um, considered is, is the big oak tree in the back of Academy Music where, where cars and mm -hmm. trucks are constantly oh, yeah. driving that's, them right up that's and parking there. That's, mm -hmm. because that that's is Academy? Under, that's under the jurisdiction of the trustees, yes. Can we contact them? You can. I'm just going to tell you that you're going to get some pushback because there's been multiple meetings between. Um, the same thing is going to happen to the library trees. That's board of directors and the mayor. The same thing is going to happen to that tree as what's happening to the library trees. Probably. Mm -hmm. just oh, it's faced so much yeah. com compaction, that poor tree. Yeah, I don't know how it's doing so uh, much. Yeah, yeah. So what you're saying is they may be aware of a problem, but they're not especially interested. No, there, there's a, because of the nature of, so the, the way that the cat, the way that the Pulaski Park pushes against the Academy, there's been, the Academy has wanted some concessions about using the park and designing things outside the Academy for their events. Overflow cut. Yes, and um, basically um, what it was is they said, well, fine, we'll do that, but you have to redesign the back entrance of the Academy itself. So. Um, because some of, a lot of the parking that was happening there was actually on city park property, mm -hmm. not city academy property. Two different things, mm -hmm. two different governing bodies running. Mm -hmm. It was just creep. They so were just creeping. So it, there was a lot of negotiation going around there. So um, I don't rem I don't have in my brain what the final design is going to look like. But the, the effort was to try to save that tree, but still maintain a, uh, a I think a, a permeable area that they can drive on because they have to actually deliver all the goods to the academy for every event in the back but not make it a parking lot like it is presently mm -hmm. let's try to do something about it save that would it be worth it worth it if somebody different reached out to them well i think i think we really kind of need to see what everything looks like when they're finished mm -hmm. you 
know, I, I think that uh, Simpson and Associates have been very, I give them an A plus for the amount of tree protection and mm -hmm. the amount of uh, information they actually put in their um, bid document about tree protection. And they are just very adamant, um, very impressive actually, because I had to go and do a whole survey of all the trees that were in the park mm -hmm. that were gonna stay in the state of their health, but the ones that were gonna be removed that were on park property that belong that are under my jurisdiction and not I, I did one for the the big tree in the back of the academy and measured it but it's not really it's not considered a city street tree it's not in the public right away uh -huh. so for me to be so for are you for, worried about the trees yet? well i think i know it's 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 I mean, it's durable in some ways it seems like it's 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 taken all the abuse and doesn't seem to show any wear for it, but but uh, maybe I'm missing something. No. Oaks and elms seem to be able to endure a lot more than some other trees because they tend to have a deeper root system. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it, it a lot depends on the soil composition where the tree is. Uh, that's a big factor. They're going to continue working there for many more months, so we could at least prevent any further compaction. I think it's as compacted as it's going to get. <laughs> it's not going to be any harder. No, it's, pretty, it's like concrete over there. Yeah. It is like concrete. It does have a lot of tip dye back. We've been in there twice. And we've pruned it in the last five years to get rid of the dead wood. Um, and I would imagine that it, it's going to just suffer from tip dye back and it's just going to kind of retrench. It's just going to go to retrenchment. Just, it's like the trees up there. It's, it will happen eventually. But it's, it's, it's amazingly durable. I, I, you know, I'm just impressed. Um, so there's, you know, there's political, political okay, will so in the air. Just well, to wrap, just to wrap this up, I just was going to add, like, even if nothing is done, sometimes it's still worth just letting folks know that we're aware of it and concerned. It, it I, is. I, there's, there's no question about it. But I don't think that I don't think that the, I, I think people are aware of its health and our aware and concerned about it. And the tree's not going to be removed. They're actually going to reduce the amount of parking that's around it, you know. That's probably not going to reduce the amount of damage that's already, it's, it's not going to alleviate the problems that have been created by compaction already. Yeah. But it's going forward, will you know, there won't be constant driving. I, I don't know if they're going to do any air skating around the tree. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Okay. So I could find out that information and share it with you. All right. Interesting. It, it really is a, is a fantastic specimen. I would really hate to see it harmed and yet I, I don't have enough knowledge to know whether or not what they're doing now is any worse than what's been happening for the last five years and if it's so I, I, I defer to you guys on this one but if you do feel like it's it's at risk um, and that that's just going to continue and it's going to cause a, a um, an earlier death then I do feel like we should intervene on some level well, there's because definitely we, evidence if you go in and air spade, lighten up the soil, stay off of it, that you can definitely increase, improve the health of the tree. But uh -huh. they've got to decide to do that and give it the space it needs to do that. It's so really with that chestnut that they actually, they kept in front of the park, they air spaded all around it. Uh, and uh, then they built, there's a, a nice granite, uh, raised granite uh, curving around the outside of it and they actually increased its, they actually increased the actual uh, soil space yeah. open to the air, they air spaded it and then they um, put some nice soil back yeah. in there and then mulched it. But that tree is probably, I'm more worried about that tree than I am about the oak, to be sure with you, that horse chestnuts. Oh, they nice. actually wanted to cut it down last yeah. year and I said, no way. I said, well, I said, well we're, gonna, we're developing the park and we should probably need to remove it now. And I'm like, you're not removing it. End of story. <laughs> Staying. If it dies, we'll deal with it. We'll put another tree in it. We'll do something different. Thanks, Rich. So. Yeah. Okay. So you will contact someone at the Academy of Music. No, I actually talked to Dave Lett, who's our engineering department. Okay. He's the one in charge of the whole project. So oh, yes. Okay. Good. All right. Um, so report back to us on that next next time. We meet. Any other business? Let's move on to to-do list recap. All right, there's quite a few. Let me know if I missed anything. Maybe you already did this slowly, but I, I, I wrote down, send the commissioners the PDF of the door hanger. 
Yes, I did that. Okay. Uh, all right, regarding Arbor Day, there's a number of things. I'm going to update the Google spreadsheet. Um, Rich is going to fill in the column for the DPW helpers. Um, I'm going to forward to Rich the email communication with Sal, the principal of leads, to see if we're going to do a tree planting there after all. Um, Jay is going to develop some talking points for the bare root planting. Um, Lily, maybe you already did this, the type of trees. Gonna put those on the spreadsheet. Uh, I did that. I did that. All okay. the schools are we're doing bare roots? Yes. 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 Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, Rich is going to plant uh, the tree uh, at the cedar chest on Arbor Day, the 29th. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lily is going to, in addition to the press release, do a photo op release. Um, next week, we're going to do practice tree planting on Monday, 8 a.m. and Wednesday, oh, excuse me, Monday, 3.15 p.m. and Wednesday, 8 a.m. Um, and Rob is going to contact sites for that. And email us. Yep. Um, I'm going to follow up with Angie, one of the volunteers. Perhaps she can do some uh, photography on the 29th for us. Okay, moving along, um, we're just going to draft um, RF, RF, a review of the RFP for the commissioners. Who's going to send us that, the draft RFP, for us to review? Um, Rich is going to ask Molly for bid specifications and also ask if an extension is possible if necessary. Uh, Rich is going to get, can't be my writing, um, oh, get a sense of how long it'll take to do the inventory. Uh, Lily is going to um, send a spreadsheet to Wayne regarding the uh, LIDAR specs and also um, find out about how much money is available to evaluate. Not how much money, just what what the timeline is. On. Oh, the timeline, all right. Yeah. Okay. Three other things. Um, this isn't immediate, but Lily and Jen are going to work on an op-ed for uh, solar, the solar tree controversy. Uh, Rich is going to ask Dave uh, regarding uh, the oak tree behind the Academy of Music. Options for taking care of that. And I'm going to, after Arbor Day, work on a proposal for um, this memorial tree program. Great. Anything else? I get, so am I, is Jay doing the materials or do I have to find the materials? Oh, the I'll talk with you um, at the just end. Just, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And also the door hanger I just sent, Yes. Um, on one side of it, it does have a, a summary of many benefits of trees. Oh, okay. So, you know, um, you know, if that's just something you can refer to. Yes, I should also add that, that regarding uh, materials for Arbor Day, um, we're going to provide the schools with specific information as we summarize on the benefits of trees and how to um, plant the tree properly and take care of it within its first year. That, that's the focus of what we're providing to teachers. Yeah. And then in addition to that, we have some that handouts for the children. Exactly. No, we don't necessarily, I mean, you know, it's not going to take much to pull it together. The benefits of the trees, that's the part that I just described I have on the door hanger okay. and that I prefer to Marilyn. It's not really in a format that she can send to the teachers, but, so this is just a way of, again, getting the teachers to introduce these concepts mm -hmm. before the planting. Right. Simple, simple stuff. Like, okay. this is K through five, so okay. super simple stuff. So Oh. Yeah, we also discussed um, there's two other types of door hangers that we're considering, one on setback planting and one on volcano mulching. Uh, that's not an immediate to do, but... Yeah, and then the last thing is oh, not immediate great. to do, but just somehow getting this in uh, in the water bill. Oh, that's yes, something. in the water bill, too. Right, kind of and or water bill, what, how, what. Yeah. yeah. And, and the um, setback planting hangers. <coughs> 
would be useful soon. Yeah. Uh, potentially. Yeah. If we move ahead. Okay, I've got to check in with my uh, my friend Seth to see if he, he's willing to rework the door hanger. Like that. Do you wanna do you wanna get me uh, language for that? Yeah. That that would be great. But, yeah, especially now that I see the other one, I'll try and get it to sort of okay. look like that. Okay. Very productive meeting, folks. Yeah. And we're <laughs> ahead of time. Wow. Woohoo! Can they all be like that? All right, so um, do we have a motion to adjourn this meeting? I'll make that motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting is adjourned.